Alright, what's up guys, welcome back to the channel. This is gonna be the first episode of Study Vlog, the series where I break down the tips, tricks and skills to study medicine better. I already have a couple of videos that broadly explain my approach to learning medicine in general, but the point with these short vlogs will be to complement those videos with more specific and tangible advice. I'll walk you through all of the resources, tools and techniques I've used to learn microbiology, pharmacology, cardiology, endocrinology and well pretty much all of the ologies. And all of that while I show you some actual footage of me studying, because well, showing you anything else would be kinda weird. But in any case, today I wanted to talk about learning pharmacology, since let's face it, deep down we all hate pharmacology. So, broadly speaking, pharmacology has two types of content. The first one is all of the principles and processes, and this is where you include things like the line weaver work plots, half-life, volume of distribution, and all of the general concepts really. The second one are the specific drugs. Now, when it comes to principles, the trick is really to ask all of the W and H questions. And remember, what you need to do here is understand before you even dare to memorize, not the other way around. A technique I often use to check if I truly understood the content is the Feynman technique, but don't pretend like you're explaining the concept to a 5 year old, as many others encourage, because by doing that you'll dispense with the technical language that you actually need to master the content. Instead, do as if you were explaining the concept to a fellow medical student. This will ensure that you use and understand the correct terminology and appropriate terms. Now, if you're like me and some concepts just don't seem to make sense or you're finding it hard to understand how the hell is this important, one thing you could try is to find out how the content is asked. For instance, when I was learning the line with Burke plots, I really just couldn't wrap my head around the topic. So I went ahead and searched for a few questions on the subject, and by doing that my mind now had a little bit more perspective, and the whole thing just made so much more sense. When it comes to resources, my favorite ones are probably Crush for the USMLE, the Ambus Library, Osmosis, and Physio. But in all honesty, if you do some digging in YouTube, you can probably find some guy explaining very well the concepts you're looking for. So yeah, you don't really need to buy those expensive farm textbooks. Now, regarding the specific drugs, I heavily emphasize the importance of learning them slowly, gradually, and by layers. The most common mistake I see people make when studying pharmacology is that they open their farm book and they just try to absorb everything on it. Unsurprisingly, very few things end up sticking. Now, my approach varied depending on the specific drugs, but generally speaking, it involved five to six sequential steps. First, I made sure to embed the drugs in some type of context, which generally speaking meant understanding the big families of the drugs and how do those families relate to other families of similar drugs. I did this because I realized by watching movies that learning about new characters was always easier when I had the families nailed down. In the series or movies where the families weren't that clear, new characters would easily escape my memory, because I had no way to pin them down to already built mental structures. Whereas for example, if I learned about William Weasley, all I needed to do was to pin him down as one of the Weasley brothers, and then it just sticked. So in a sense, learning the families makes learning the characters easier. So, I try to do precisely the same thing with drugs. For example, if I'm learning about atropine, I first try to understand the class of drugs it belongs to and how that class of drugs relates to other classes before even reading anything about atropine itself. This helps me to see the bigger picture and create sort of like a mental palace, which makes learning the specifics quite a bit easier. After doing this, I move on to learning the important names, and the key here is to realize that there is a ridiculous amount of pharmacologic agents out there, and if you try to learn them all at once, you'll really chew more than you can swallow. So I encourage you to first focus on learning by heart the most important agents, and forgetting about the rest, at least for now. One thing you can try is to see if there are any hints that allow you to infer the class of drug based on the name. For instance, direct 10A factor inhibitors always have a 10A included in the name. This allows you to focus on remembering by heart the three most common ones and at the same time be able to pick up the ones that you chose not to memorize. Now, depending on the drug class, remembering the names can be done in a matter of minutes without much mental effort or a matter of days with a huge mental effort. For those tough ones, I suggest you that you try to repeat them every single day until you're comfortable saying all of their names. You can use flashcards for this purpose, but personally I just did the exercise of rolling them down every single day in the morning until recalling them felt easy. Once you have the names, then you start adding the important characteristics, and in here the same principle applies. Not all characteristics are important. 
And in fact, in the same way you don't need to know the freckles of Bill Weasley to comprehend its role in the movie, you also don't need to learn the volume of distribution of most drugs to be a good doctor, or even to score well on your test, for that matter. And if you don't believe me, just ask 10 physicians what is the volume of distribution of lisinopril, and you'll see what I mean. This is precisely the reason for why I don't recommend most pharmacology textbooks when learning drugs, because most of them just bombard you with every single unnecessary detail about every single unimportant drug, and that just never sticks in my experience. Instead, I encourage you to use easily accessible resources like Medscape, UpToDate, and Ambos, but instead of reading them trying to learn everything that's said over there, skim through them, trying to answer specific questions you have. I usually start by trying to answer the pharmacology trifecta, which is mechanism of action, indications, and adverse effects. And that's it. Unless I'm being asked specifically to search for anything else, I usually just stick with those three ones. In fact, I don't even try to grasp everything of those three. For instance, if you read the adverse effects of some antibiotics, you'll find lists with dozens of adverse effects. And I never try to remember all of that, I just can't. Instead, I just focus on the ones that are either common, important, or tested. Now, the key here is to process the information as much as possible. So, for instance, if you learn that oxybutynin is used for urinary incontinence, go ahead and review your physiology to understand why is that the case. Ask yourself if this is an effect from the drug class as a whole or just specific to this particular drug. Try to see if by considering the mechanism of action you can deduce the adverse effects. Also, try to create templates as much as possible. For instance, my template for beta-lactam antibiotics is that they all inhibit PVPs, they're all bactericidal and they're all time-dependent. So I can just stamp that on top of each beta-lactam and get to focus on what's unique about each one. Once you have that down, proceed to learn the remaining details with a necessity lens as you go through medical school. For instance, if you're on a rotation and you're seeing a patient with a MRSA infection, go ahead and review the pharmacological reasons for why you would select vancomycin versus linezolide versus daptomycin in a given case. This is where you'll expand your knowledge on things like volume of distribution, tissue penetration, half-life, dosing, and all of that fun stuff. And if you've got to this point with solid bases, these new details will just fit right into your already built structure. Also, you'll get to understand this information with a practical sense, not as pure theoretical mambo jumbo. Finally, use space repetition as much as you can. When you're first starting out, you'll recur to flashcards and clinical cases, and that's great, but as you move on in your career, you'll realize that doing 500 Anki cards every single day is just not practical. So, try to use your everyday experiences as a way to do a space repetition. For instance, every time you have a patient in the clinic, make the effort to actively go through all of his medications to see if you remember the important details. If you don't, use the opportunity and review them. This sounds easy, but in my experience, most students just go through their emotions in clinical rotations. So, don't be one of them and use everything around you as a way to keep practicing and improving yourself. And well, that's it for this vlog. Please do let me know if you liked it and what topic would you like to see appear in the next one. As always, thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys in the next video.